Namo Adidatha. Thanks so much for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The fifth mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by unmindful consumption, I vow to cultivate good health, both physical and mental, for myself, my family, and my society, by practicing mindful eating, drinking, and consuming. I will ingest only items that preserve peace, well-being, and joy in my body, in my consciousness, and in the collective body and consciousness of my family and society. I'm determined not to use alcohol or any other items that contain toxins, such as certain TV programs, magazines, books, films, and conversations. I'm aware that to damage my body or my consciousness with these poisons is to betray my ancestors, my parents, my society, and future generations. I will work to transform violence, fear, anger, and confusion in myself and in society by practicing a diet for myself and for society. I understand that a proper diet is crucial for self-transformation and the transformation of society. For our Dharma lessons, we're reading Ajahn Munindo's book, Unexpected Freedom. Today we're beginning a chapter called Getting to Know Our Emotional Household, beginning with Dhammapada, verses 58 through 59. Just as a sweet smelling and beautiful lotus can grow from a pile of discarded waste, the radiance of a true disciple of the Buddha outshines dark shadows cast by ignorance. Somebody has asked the question, what is emotion? I can't see I know how to answer that question directly. I'm not even sure it would be very useful to try and say what emotion is. It's like asking, what is gravity? If we were to look in a physics textbook, we would find detailed mathematical descriptions of how gravity works, but they still don't explain what the force of gravity actually is. It can be described in terms of its effects, and accurate predictions can be made about how it affects matter. Similarly, it might not be difficult to come up with a psychological or neurophysiological descriptions of emotional activity, but I suggest that they probably wouldn't be all that helpful. However, I'm pleased the question has been asked, since I'm sure most of us have found out that we can't really apply ourselves to the practice of awareness without encountering strong emotions. We quite rightly feel a need to understand this dimension of ourselves. A useful way to approach the understanding of emotions is by considering not what they are, but rather how we can discover an unobstructed relationship with them. By that I mean how we can get to know ourselves intimately how we can learn by way of first-hand investigation to see where and how it is we find ourselves blocked or obstructed in our ability to receive emotion, our own or those of others. So I would recommend, instead of asking what, that we ask how. How does it feel to feel what we feel? How freely can we feel what we feel when, for instance, we feel regret or disappointment? Do we escape up into our head and start analyzing ourselves, asking what is this regret, this disappointment, trying to create an explanation? Related to this, a doctor friend who rings me from America from time to time was sharing his understanding of what he thinks is going on when Buddhists talk about transmigrating through various realms of existence. According to him, this talk is about creating a mythology as a way of processing information that has been stored up in the brain. 
He gave a very sophisticated description that I confess I couldn't really understand. But more important than my ability to grasp his abstraction was that I didn't get any sense that this interpretation took him to a place of resolution. And surely that is the point of our practice, to take us to an experience of completeness. It's quite valid to interpret the traditional Buddhist depictions of the six realms of existence in terms of inner realities that we experience here and now, not only as referring to possible past and future lives. Yet we still have the task of finding out for ourselves how to remain conscious and calm as we ascend to the heavens or descend into hell realms. It's very easy to become attached to intellectualizations as a way of avoiding a more direct apprehension of ourselves. If we have a tendency to do this, we could be failing to make use of the valuable opportunity to face our strong emotions and passions in their raw reality. Unless we get to the root cause of our painful and unpleasant feelings, we will become lost time and again in pleasure or in pain, falling for their convincing appearance of permanence. Ultimately, we need access to much better rooted resources than abstract descriptions. May all beings be well, may all beings be happy, may all beings be peaceful. Namo Adidapa. Thanks so much for joining me today.